the length of the stress control tube is proportional to the operating voltage. For example, the length will be 190 to 250 mm for 22 kV operating voltage. The top and bottom portion of the stress control tube is clearly visible from the indentation at the surface of the anti-tracking tube. The distance between the top and bottom indentation is equal to the length of the stress control tube. The picture on the left shows a stress control tube of 190 mm length and used for 22 kV operating voltage. It is the correct length. The picture on the right shows 90 mm length of stress control tube for the same 22 kV operating voltage. It is of the incorrect length and equivalent to using a 6.6 kV cable termination for 22 kV operating voltage. Premature failure of the cable termination will be inevitable. This picture shows severe partial discharge at the interface of the XLPE and semiconducting layer. This is evidence from the circumferential discoloration. The root cause was the absence of stress relief mastic at the interface. The trapped air at the interface was unable to withstand the operating voltage and resulted in partial discharge. If stress relief mastic was used at the interface, there would be no trapped air and hence no partial discharge. At the interface of the white XLP insulation and the black semiconducting layer, we have two observations. Firstly, there was no stress relief mastic at the interface. The mastic is usually yellow in color and from the picture, no stress relief mastic was used. With the absence of mastic, there would be trapped air at the interface. This trapped air was unable to withstand the operating voltage and there will be partial discharge at the interface. The second observation, notice the jagged edges at the semiconducting layer, which should be smooth. Although not a serious issue, it does indicate poor workmanship when removing the semiconducting layer. This picture shows a puncture through the XLPE insulation. It was exactly at the interface between the black semiconducting layer and the white XLPE insulation. The location of the puncture is typical of many premature failures of cable terminations. This picture shows the root cause of the puncture. There was total absence of stress relief mastic at the interface, and so pockets of air will be trapped at this interface. The trapped air will not be able to withstand the operating voltage, and there will be partial discharge along the entire circumference of the interface. This led to the puncture. This picture shows incorrect positioning of the stress control tube, which was placed too far down from the cable lock. There will be insufficient air separation between the three stress control tubes. The result was partial discharge and evident from the black discoloration at the cable termination. The stress control tube should be placed higher up and closer to the cable lock. This will result in larger air separation between the stress control tubes. This picture shows the penetration of the cable termination into the cable box of a transformer. Unfortunately, the metal plate of the cable box was almost touching the stress control tube. There will be partial discharge at the surface of the stress control tube at the penetration point into the cable box. The stress control tube is not at zero voltage and must be treated the same as exposed live parts. The solution is to have the stress control tube higher up the termination and towards the cable lock. This picture was the result of insufficient spacing between the stress control tubes from different phases of the cable termination. 
with insufficient spacing. The air clearance between the stress control tube was unable to withstand the operating voltage. This led to partial discharge at the surface of both stress control tube. This picture shows insufficient air separation between the stress control tube from different phases of the cable termination. There will be partial discharge at the surface of the stress control tube. In this example, there is little room to move the stress control tube higher up and towards the cable lug. There are three solutions. Solution one is to use cable termination that can accommodate the space constraint of the cable box. These are more expensive cable termination, where the stress control tube are much shorter and will fit into the cable box. This type of cable termination has all critical parts integrated into one piece and are slipped on to the cable. Solution 2 is to have the breakout of the cable termination outside the cable box. This will create more vertical height to meet the minimum air separation between stress control tube from different phases. Solution 3 is to use single core cable instead of multi core cable. The use of single core cables will eliminate the problems created by phase crossing at the cable termination. This photo shows a 22 kV single core XLPE cable. The stress relief mastic was used but comically applied at the wrong area. The jointer had incorrectly applied the yellow mastic at the interface of the upper portion of the stress control tube with the XLPE insulation. A little joke to lighten up this comical error. It is like a man wearing his underwear outside of his pants and telling everyone it is the correct way because he saw Superman wearing that way. The jointer was clearly not competent. Back to more serious matter. This photo shows the stress control tube removed to inspect for damage to the XLP insulation. The yellowish stains were the stress relief mastic but applied at the wrong area. At the interface where the mastic was supposed to be applied, there was evidence of discoloration along the entire circumference of the XLP insulation. This circular discoloration was due to severe partial discharge. Eventually, there will be puncture through the XLP insulation at this location.